Welcome back to stage two. So this stage, we will talk about the API developer experience. Mm -hmm. So he's come, we have two speakers on stage at the same time. They are Stephen and Grace, both from, uh, they both are the technology engineer at IBM. And we will talk about the deploying and upgrading your first API in 30 minutes or less. Thanks, Stephen and Grace. Awesome, so hi and welcome to our session on deploying and upgrading your first API in 30 minutes or less. So firstly, we would just like to take the opportunity to say thank you to API Days Hong Kong for having us and giving us this opportunity to present. Um, so let's get into it. So hi, I'm Grace, I'm a tech engineer at IBM and I work within the client engineering team department. Um, I've been on lots of projects on my time, I've been on lots of projects during my time at IBM. Um, and most recently I had the opportunity to go on a training course to Prague, which, um, alluded to points that of the tools we're going to be using today. And this sparked my interest in not only integration, but more specifically APIs. Awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on uh, the different time zones involved. Uh, my name is Stephen Patrick, um, also a technology engineer. So same team as Grace and uh, within client engineering in the UK. I've also been uh, lucky enough to be on uh, many different unique projects in my time. Uh, and some of them have alluded to uh, the tool or the key tool that we'll be touching on today, which is API Connect. Um, I was actually uh, presenting on on last year's API Days Hong Kong as well, uh, but on a slightly different, um, but very similar actually uh, integration related topic. Um, but it's great to be back, and and uh, we really hope that you enjoy the concept that we've put together uh, today. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, and back to you, Grace. Awesome. So we'll just go through a quick agenda of um, what we're going to be doing today. So we've done our introductions. Um, we'll go over the technology that we're going to be using. Um, we also have two different roles for our demo. So we're going to go over what the roles are and who's involved in that. Um, we'll have a brief look at the demo architecture and how that works. And then, of course, we'll get into the fun bit, which is the actual demos. Awesome. So the technology that we're going to be using today is IBM A API Connect. Um, it's an API management solution that can create, manage, secure, socialize, as and monitorizes um, APIs. So um, a quick disclaimer though, these are the products, these are products we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's why we've chosen to use them. Um, however, we want to make it very clear that this is not the only way to do it. And there are many, many alternatives to API Connect. Some are just, a few are just listed on the screen there. Um, so by no means are we trying to sell you anything, but you can have a go at um, doing it with other alternatives um, besides API Connect. So I'll hand over to Stephen. Thank you very much. So uh, before you jump into, um, as, as Grace uh, rightly said, the, the interesting part of, of this talk, which are the demos, we thought it'd be good to give a bit of context um, around how we kind of came up with a demo in terms of, and I think uh, I think when we were first talking about this, Grace rightly said, you know, what is the story we're trying to tell and how, how would this look? And um, so we're, we're gonna have essentially two personas. Um, I'll be the, playing the role of an API manager and uh, Grace will be a, a fantastic developer uh, looking to consume an API. So I will be, uh, or I will be wanting to create an API. Um, so developing that and then deploying it in, in some sort of form so that individuals such as Grace and developers such as Grace can, um, use subscribe and use the API. Um, so that's kind of the high level. We'll get into more elements uh, or ideas around managing that API as well and how that how you can manage your API effectively um, uh, using sort of the versioning and making sure that those individuals using your APIs are, um, uh, are kind of monitored or, or are happy with the kind of version um, upgrades as you go forward. So the architecture we're looking at today, uh, keeping those two personas in mind, um, as mentioned, so I'll have this API in mind that I want to develop and I do so within the API Connect Manager portal. Um, which is slightly different from the portal that you'll see Grace uh, a display. And then, uh, so I will use the manager tool to develop my API, deploy it as a product, and then publish it through to the developer portal that Grace has uh, access to. And then we'll switch over. So Grace will show us her side of the view, um, or her point of view, sorry, where she can now see this API, get look into it, and if she chooses, she can subscribe and make it accessible to the application that she is developing. And then she can say securely using a client ID, uh, you know, a client um, ID, uh, um, make calls to that API in an application. Uh, and then the second part of the demo will be more around how can I upgrade that API uh, safely and make sure the changes are rolled through to the public 
but not affect those on the original version of my API. So this is now over to, uh, as, as we said, the, the, the fun part, which is, uh, um, uh, the demo. So let me flick up, um, API manager and there it is already. Uh, it's almost like we prepped this and, um, this is the portal that I see. This is what, uh, as I was saying is the, uh, API connect manager. So this is uh, essentially for those managing, developing and doing anything to do with the APIs in terms of, um, uh, bringing out to the public. And through these tiles, you see, I can uh, manage a lot of things, settings, et cetera. And I'm going to pop into here because I want to develop my first um, API. Now today for this, I'm going to be using a, uh, a very basic, very public, um, a a API called postcodes.io. Um, to be fair, <laughs> Grace as a developer could use this directly, but we're using API connect as a layer. Um, but mainly I'm, I'm making where we chose to use this because this requires no authentication. So it makes the creation of the API very simple and quick, which is ideal for a, for a short demo like this. Um, but hopefully the concept will, will still remain very consistent to, to kind of other APIs that you might develop. So I'm going to uh, keep it quite simple. What I want to basically do to start off with is create an API that will let a user call a get and, um, you know, provide one parameter, which is going to be a postcode. And when they, what they get back is going to be a bunch of information about, um, that postcode, which is, which is great. Right. Maybe that, I don't know what this could be used for. Um, but that's, that's not, that's not really my, pro, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, focus me as an API manager. I just want to create APIs that, um, uh, developers can make use of. So we're going to jump over to, uh, our, uh, our instance that I'm struggling to find, and we are going to add an API. And we get a lot of um, uh, kind of uh, uh, settings here, uh, which type of API, uh, open API spec we want to use or async API. We're going to go for open API 3.0 and we're going to go uh, from target service. So this diagram actually explains it quite well, but um, from an app, we use um, this API, uh, which is you know, the one that's hosted within API manager um, to access a target endpoint. And that target endpoint is going to be postcodes.io. So we'll create it and we'll give some basic information like a title, post get API, a path. I can remove that if I want, but I'll keep it as such. And then a, a, a target service URL, uh, which is going to be api.postcodes.io. So that is this, this starting bit here. You can include this, this follow up bit because a lot of them seem to be using that. Um, and that just kind of makes it easier in terms of when you're making your calls, uh, but I'm going to leave it out. Um, I think a lot of K a, a lot of times you, you will just have that base URL, uh, because you may start to get other parts in the future added on, um, bring in, uh, additional parts. So that's all done there and we've got the target service URL. So let's click next again, uh, a few more settings. So this is around securing the, uh, securing the calls. So do we want to make sure that developers like grace can only access this with the client ID. I'm going to say yes. And we're going to keep calls as well. So next that's all done very quick. Makes sense because there's not actually nothing much other than a, a base layer and put on there. So some, um, good UI there that I can make use of. I can also edit this directly using, um, open API spec if I'm more comfortable. And uh, if I open on the side here parts and I go under here. Uh, under our base path, we see we've got loads. We've got get, put, post, delete, head, patch, and that's fantastic. But really, I don't want all of that. Um, all I want to use firstly is get. So I'm going to remove everything up to here and clear that. And you'll see, should be pretty quick. There you go. Oh, and I also don't want patch as well. So let me remove that. And we're just going to be left with one. Now, the other thing I'm going to add on, and I'm going to change back to the non um, uh, dot form, is I'm going to change this to, say, postcode. Uh, like that. Uh, year two, let's double check. Oh, I think this might need to be lowercase actually. Um, and so this is so that in the path we can supply or the developer can pass in the postcode within the URL. And then that can be picked up uh, as a parameter that we can then feed in. So under operations, under get, I'm going to add in a parameter and I'm going to call this one postcode. And it's going to be in the path as, as we can see there, and we're just going to make sure it's required create. And then if you want, you can add a schema. So in this case, I'm going to set this to type. Now, the other thing to do is within responses, you're under 200, 
you just need to define, and it's already defined for you, what the uh, re return objects can be. So it's application JSON. And what helps is providing a an example. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And what we'll do is actually we'll try with out an example and see where we get to because from my examples here I can see oh no I've got it right here so let me just grab that and then it's complaining about the indentation which makes absolute sense so we just need to bring that back that need there we go no more error um so save that because any kind of validation errors will pop up go into gateway and the other, th other thing I need to do is if we go invoke, so this is the one thing that happens when we evoke um, our um, API, is you can see that the target URL, which is what we set at the start, is, is going to be triggered. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and if we remember from the postcodes.io, it's actually that forward slash postcodes forward slash and then passing in the parameter. So I'm going to add that right here to our target URL as postcodes and then uh, forward slash uh let me double check uh yeah forward slash and then we're going to grab something from our request which is going to be request dot parameters dot postcode so that's going to come from our path so that's all done so that should be able to grab that let's once again save that and we should be able to do this now i could test this on the side and if that was a good um uh, you know we can actually show that working so if I go, uh, let that come alive, uh, we should be able to just simply put in something here and send, and we get a 200 and we get what we expected, um, which is great. And that's what we should see from the test perspective, right? Now I want developers such as Grace to be able to access that. So let's get that set up. So then we can switch over to Grace and to do that. So I'm going to click these three buttons uh, and the under options, I'm going to click publish and I'm going to create a new product for this. I'm going to give it the same name, version one, because it is the first version and that's going to be published. So where that's going to uh, automatically, uh, well, it's asking me where, where it wants me to publish. I only have one catalog, which is sandbox, leave this all as default. And what this now means is under my catalog, I can see that there and now I'm going to stop sharing because it's time for our developer Grace to show you how that the uh, consumption of this uh, API looks from her perspective. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I there will just share my screen now. Um, as you can see, I'm in the developer portal. If I refresh my screen, hopefully you can see the product that uh, Stephen has created. Um, so before I do this, I'm going to create a new application. To do that, I go into apps and hopefully when it loads, okay, I can see there's no apps here already, but I can see I can create a new app. So I'm going to create a new app. I'm going to call it postcode application. Um, I'm going to keep everything else as default and I'm going to save that. Um, here I can see that I've got a new API key and secret. I'm going to copy my API key and I'm going to go and save it into my notes because I'm going to need this later on. Um, and I will just click OK. So now I've set up my new application. I'm going to go back to my home page and I'm going to select my uh, product. And now I'm in my product, I can see the API that um, has been created by Stephen. When I select my API, I can see the get option and I can scroll down and it's got me my curl command. Um, I can also have a go at trying it, but for this example, um, I'm gonna have a go at the curl command. Um, but first I need to get access. So if I select on get access and I select the default plan, and then the postcode application. Um, I can subscribe to this plan, which is what I want to do. And once we've done that, I can click done. So now that's all linked up my, my application and my API. So now I can have a go at testing out the um, call command in my um, command line. So first, I'm just going to go to my notes and I'm just going to paste this over here and add in this into here um, and I'm going to replace my postcode. Maybe that should be all right. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste this into my terminal. Hopefully this is clear enough. Oh, so I wonder why that has happened. Uh, let me have a look as well. But 
uh, you know, any live demo isn't isn't good if it's uh, if it's perfect the first time, right? So uh, yeah, try removing this space so it's all in one. Um, oh yeah, sorry, because it's coming as part of the part, it won't it won't be quotations, so you will need to remove the quotations, um, and it will have no space um, because it's coming directly from the part. So between the PR three and the second part of the um, uh, postcode, you uh, you're basically sending it as if you were putting it into a a browser. So that's not really right, but that's good. I'm, I'm, that's nice that that happens because when it works, it's a lot more rewarding. <laughs> awesome. So I think that kind of demonstrates everything you can do for the get postcode. Thank you, Stephen, for your help. No uh, worries. So let me share again. I think even, um, you know, we're obviously recording these uh, sessions ahead of uh, the live event, but even during the live event, it's it's so likely that, you know, you run into these small problems that you would when you're developing. Um, so it's great. And, and, you know, you either work it out during or you don't, uh, and it's, it's a bit awkward because you don't get to show what you're meant to. So, <laughs> um, cool. So we're, we, we've done a great job there, right? We've developed our very own API in API Connect. We've deployed it. We've published it into the portal that um, Grace has access to. She's been able to create an application and then she's been able to subscribe and then make use of that um, API. Now, the second part is uh, of this demo is around uh, myself wanting to add a bit of additional functionality. So in this case, I wanna add the second part of um, this call, which is uh, bulk looking up. So rather than a get, we do a post and we post a um, array of postcodes. So for this, I wanna create a new version. So we're going to save this as a new version and this and we're going to call this version two and we can see now there's a duplicate they'll be exactly the same um right now anyways open this up uh you know it's exactly what we remember from before Ooh, we've accidentally clicked away get that back and now we're going to create a new um uh operation but we're not going to create under here because if you look at the spec here this is not asking for uh, for the post. It's not saying postcodes forward slash and then the parameter. It's asking for you to put it as part of the body. So um, I'm going to create a, a new path, and I'm just going to create it as as a base because it's going to be part of that. But we're going to create a brand new operation, and this is going to be a post. Uh, do, 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 do this is going to be a post. Um, and that's uh, about it there. But now I want to provide an example post. Actually, we can do it in here. We want to say for content, it's going to be application JSON. And then we're brought into application JSON itself. Now we can give a, a, a bit of a schema if we wish to. So I'm just going to call it rec because this is going to be our kind of um, request um, object and uh, we can call this um, uh, postcodes. Uh, oh, that we're gonna have there. And this is gonna be uh, an array, sorry. Or this can be, yeah, an array and it's gonna be of strings. And as part of that, we're gonna keep that as required. And what I can add is if anything that I want to wish to edit, I can also do it directly from there. So probably title postcodes, and then maybe I want to actually give an indication uh, of an example as well as uh, the type. So I can do this and we'll get um, type is string. So these individual items are string and an example of what this um, uh, request looks like. So that's fantastic. And now the other thing to do, and uh, this should save as expected, no errors, that's always good. Um, we come here. We're going to add an operation switch. So we're going to uh, we're going to basically say um, that uh, there are two different cases now, right? Before it was just get, but now we're going to have a second case that they may say post, and in that case, we're going to have a slightly different invoke um, uh, URL. So we can use this oh, down here, and for our first one, we're going to keep it as such. But for the second one, we don't need to go to postcodes. Um, we can go to, uh, oh, well, we don't, we don't need to go postcodes forward slash the parameter. We just need to go postcodes forward slash and then give the body of the text, um, or the body of the JSON, sorry, which has all our postcodes. So save that. Um, and we should be good to go. Uh, so I can test it here. Um, but what we can do 
is pass over to Grace and let her test uh, the live version. But uh, obviously at this current point, this is just an API that we have here. We don't have this deployed to any product. Um, so right now, Grace will still see this product uh, with the version 1.0 of the API. So I'll first publish this as a new product. Um, but I will have this as version two of our product. And that will generate, or it should. And uh, we'll publish that to the sandbox environment just as before. Now, in this scenario, the main thing for me is that actually I don't want new users to use version one anymore because it's outdated. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm going to stop paying attention to it. I'm only going to work on newer version now. So I have all these options that I can do. I can retire immediately, but that will mean that Grace won't have access to it. And that's not great for my existing users. So what I can do is supersede it, meaning I can allow those using it now continue to use it, but then they will be indicated that they should probably move to the new version and new users. So if I go to the developer portal that Grace was showing you guys, but this is um, one that is logged out. So this is what a new user might see. Um, I should only see, if I'm not mistaken, one version, uh, postcode 2.0. There's no 1.0 available to me to access. So if I stop sharing, Grace can take you through the process of now of uh, what, what it looks like to her as a developer consuming this uh, new version of API. Amazing. Thanks, Stephen. And if I refresh my screen, hopefully I should see, or well, maybe not, but if I definitely go to the API products, I should now see a newer version. Um, and we can also see that the postcode API is deprecated. Um, if I go to my apps and I click on my application that I have, and then my subscriptions, I can see that the product subscription to the original API is still showing as the first version, but it does give me the option to migrate this to the new plan. Um, which is good, as Stephen mentioned, um, he's going to probably stop working on this and start working on the newer version. So if I click on here, um, it gives me, it asks me if I definitely want to be able to do this and for sure I want to do this. So I'll click yes, please. Um, it gives me the API key, but I don't need to change that. That's the same as the previous one because I'm still on the same application. And I can see at the bottom here now that it's moved up to the newer version. If I go back to my App Connect instance at the beginning, API Connect rather, and I go to my product and then my API. Um, I can now try, I can now see that the, I've got the post operation as well as the get operation, which I originally had. If I go to the post operation, I can now either do the curl command like I did last time, but that went a bit messy. So this time I'm going to try the try it. Um, it is also another way of being able to do it. Um, I can generate a body of text, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some that I know already works. And I'm going to pop that in there instead. And then if I send that, oh dear, <laughs> another error. Um, let's have a look at why I've got an error. I'm sure it's probably because I've forgotten to do something. It's actually very similar, almost. The, oh, no, it's actually what's right there in the uh, example. Hmm, how curious. Uh, so if you copy that across, because I think in what you pasted in the try, it was just um, without the postcodes bit. Um, and that is probably why it's 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 not matching the schema that it was expecting. There hey, we go. there we go. You know what? Always it, it's <laughs> always stressful. Yeah, it's stressful when it comes up, but it's nice because you know you can see why certain things are failing. And in this case, it was obviously just not matching the schema, and, and that's what you want. We want it to fail when it's not matching what it's expecting. So that's great. Amazing. And now that you can see, it's working. Um, so I think we've shown both the post and get operations. So um, I will just flip back to our presentation and hand it over to Stephen to kind of close. Yeah, firstly, um, you know, I hope, hope everyone enjoyed that. And I think within under 30 minutes, as promised, uh, we have created and deployed an API um, and published that API so that a developer could subscribe and use that API. Um, and then we upgraded that very same API to have a, an additional feature and a change and deploy that new version without affecting those using the, the current version. Um, but then that developer could safely upgrade to the latest version um, as, as and when they wanted. Uh, so a very, very quick uh, kind of demo and run around of what, what, what is possible. But I guess that also alludes to what you can do um, with uh, you know, the likes of API Connect and other API management tools um, that really speed up the, the kind of development. So we'd like to just close off by once again, thanking uh, API uh, Days Hong Kong for getting us involved, um, having our talk uh, and letting us present. Um, 
please feel free to reach at us, uh, reach out to us. We're going to aim to join the live event uh, later this month. Um, but either way, please feel re uh, to reach out to us on LinkedIn and get involved. And yeah, thank you very much for listening and take care. Bye bye. The API Connect Hong Kong 2023 conference is powered by B Novelty Limited. Check out more API related education content on bnovelty.com or apidays.hk for more information.